Buddy, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the VOD Squad, the show where we talk about streaming technology. This is episode 128, April 17th, 2019. I'm just now realizing I think it's my sister's birthday. I should give her a call. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, sister. I am Clyde, and today I am joined by Matthew Ross. Happy birthday, Clyde sister! And Michael Aston. Hello, everybody, and happy birthday, Clyde sister. <laughs> you don't have to worry. She she never watches this show. So. Oh, come on! Why doesn't she watch Tell her she show? needs to watch the first, like, two minutes of it today. Yeah. Uh, so, for your birthday, we're going to embarrass the hell out of Clyde. Hey, Clyde, why haven't you called your sister? Because uh, my family, we don't really talk. Why haven't you called her already? Why don't you call her right now while on the show? I, no. Okay, didn't think so. You know, I just had to ask. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, but then I realized it's 9 o'clock. She's probably in bed. <laughs> then she'd just be angry at me. You could t- at least text her and say, oh, by the way, happy birthday. I don't know. I texted her the other day, and I still haven't gotten a response. Oh, so. All right, all right, all right. That's how my family rolls. See, my Your family, fa- we don't have drama. But you don't respond to text. But I realized, you know, I, I, the people that I deal with on a daily basis, I hear about all this crazy stuff that's going on with their families. So and so's mad at so and so, and blah blah blah. <laughs> and I said, we don't have any of those problems in my family. And then I realized, oh, because none of us live near each other, and we <laughs> see each other like maybe we get together as a family like maybe once a year. And we'll see each other here and there throughout the year. So there's no time for any drama because... You're always getting together when you're getting together and having a good time. Yeah, and then it's just like, yeah, I'm sick of you. I'm going home. <laughs> Do you say it like that? No, I. but I'm pretty sure that's what everybody thinks. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know, you know. All right. Well, at this point... <laughs> Clyde's sister, you can stop watching. It's the boring part now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right. Happy birthday, Mary. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, on <laughs> that disappointing note, uh, should we get into uh, the topic du jour? It's disappointing. I don't know about that, but I don't know one thing that's not disappointing. No, no. The, me. I, I'm, I'm disappointing. Oh, well, okay. Well, guess what, everybody? Uh, looks like the Disney Plus thing is official, and as part of that deal, Disney Plus is going to be adding some shows from Fox be right into its own streaming service. In particular, the most interesting of them all is that they're going to be getting The Simpsons, all of The Simpsons, right into Disney Plus as of one of the, the shows you can watch on it. Other shows will be on there too, like uh, apparently they're going to be doing um, some of the movies and some of the shows that they have, the other ones. Uh, like, uh, I understand that my favorite movie of all time, The Princess Bride, will be on there. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a move for uh, The Simpsons to be on with the Disney Channel, which, you know, doesn't quite make sense to me. Does that make Lisa a Disney princess? No, because she's not a princess. Oh, yeah, I otherwise, guess we're... otherwise uh, every female character that Disney's ever made would be a princess and they'd have yeah, like 5,000 yeah, princesses. There are technically yeah. princess rules like the parents have to die or something like that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, because if, if you go off of uh, uh, what was the Wreck-It Ralph movie, mm-hmm. you know, she when she ended yeah. up with the prince, but she was already a princess. She's Princess Vanellope. Right. So, you know, but... Uh, no, I mean, because if, if Lisa is a princess, then that means not only is uh, are the Belcher girls princesses, <laughs> but you know who else would be a princess? Marge. Meg. Meg. And potentially Stewie. <laughs> <laughs> now, but, are they going to get those? Well, I mean, Disney it's Plus? a Fox property, so yes. Yeah, but... Uh, but- 
fa- but no, what's scary is Family Guy is now a Disney property. You could have <laughs> Family Guy theming at Disneyland. Oh, <laughs> oh my! Oh, That's... I feel a little, little something right but here. It's on the like bright burning. side. <laughs> but on the bright side, uh, Disney now has both Star Wars and the good Star Trek, the Orville. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That, that that's totally in their uh, shoe mm-hmm. now, isn't it? That's true. Uh, so lo- it looks like they all are moving over a lot of the family-friendly movies into the Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. So, like, you have the Princess Bride, The Sound of Music, uh, the television show Malcolm in the Middle. Those shows are going to be going into the Disney Plus side of things. So, I didn't see anything here about you know, you know about Family Guy. So maybe right. they're they're not going to be Disneyfied. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, certainly the idea that Disney owns them, that's that's fair. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they go into the Disney Plus application. There can still be separation between things that are Disney, like, going to be branded under the Disney moniker or that are going to be left in some sort of, like, Fox moniker. Well, no, they, Fox- they did specifically mention that The Simpsons will be on there. Because right now, The Simpsons' home... Aside from the su- Sunday airings on Fox, the, its home is on, has been on FXX, right? Um, so it, yeah, but I'm, so it'll I'm be, just saying that like the Family Guy and American Dad and those kinds of things. Yeah, I, I don't are... think Family Guy will be um, making it onto <laughs> Disney Plus. Uh, they will be staying on Hulu. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought, quite frankly, The Simpsons would have stayed on Hulu. Oh but, no, okay. No, The Simpsons is a is a thirty years of a wholesome family uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah, I uh, mean, nuclear Bart, fish and flaming Joes, and that's all I remember from the. Aside Simpsons, from so. you know Bart getting into shenanigans that my parents thought I shouldn't watch because I would get in, I would get bad ideas, and believe me, I had worse ideas than. Uh, Bart ever did on his show um, <laughs> without his assistance. Um, but, you know, I mean, and, and a little bit of drinking from Homer. Overall, the show is not really all that, that well, inappropriate. It's, and also, you got to remember, it, it, it did go through a tonal shift. That mm-hmm. first season was oh. animated uh, Married with Children. Right. Yeah. The first was... couple seasons were animated Married with Children. But then they started, they kind of, I think it was a natural evolution, but also probably from motivation, from pressure, from uh, the communities that were not happy. They kind of moved into more, I don't want to say the Waltons, but towards like maybe the Brady Bunch. They became yeah, less that's... less married with children, more of the Brady Bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's fair. And and when I say that, you know, mm-hmm. overall they're not not terribly inappropriate. I am referring to the like kind of middle years when I was actually watching Simpsons and stuff. You know, four or five years into the to the series, and it really tamed down. It still was funny and enjoyable, at least in my opinion. Well, they found their it, stride. It, they they yeah. found what worked, and yeah, it was funny because the. The first year out that the show was out, there was a group that famously uh, basically skewered them on the air saying that they were an affront to modern civilization, that they Mm -hmm. represented everything that is wrong with uh, families and creating a model to, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, you go forward about five years, that same group praised them for being the epitome of what a family should be. <laughs> and I always thought that was funny. It was like, but mm. you said. <laughs> yeah, well, Simpsons have changed. So, All right, Well, um, the other big thing about Disney's uh, new service is that we got learned all the little details. Last week, we did not know. That it would be coming out on November 12th. Well, and we last... knew it was going to be November. We knew it was going to be late, but we didn't have an actual date. Yeah. We also did not know that they were planning to charge 
six ninety nine a month or sixty nine ninety nine for one year. We were not aware of their uh, their uh, basically thinking of trying to push this for f- a five year loss leader in order to dominate ending up dominating this uh, this field. Uh, this is a power move that only Disney could do with this kind of content and this kind of price. So I'm curious if you guys think there will be anybody who does not subscribe to this who isn't already doing something like Netflix. I honestly don't know if I'll be signing up for it. The The price is much more attractive than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um where, and it, it will Fair depend. Box. It'll depend on the content because so far everything they've announced, I've said not interested. So, right, you know, it's all been stuff that I don't care about, uh, like space trek wars and right. cartoon yeah. and <laughs> comic guys. Um, I, on the other hand, am completely stoked for it. Okay. Uh, it's all of the things that I'm excited about, mm-hmm. like space truck guys and <laughs> <laughs> official generic term like, for Star all Wars. of the things that Star he Star said Star. are all of the things that I love. Yeah. And I'm excited about all of them. So I'm on board 100 percent. I will buy the annual. I will pay the annual fee the second it's available and get in at that 70 bucks for for a year, which is really reasonable. I mean, that comes out to. Um, less than eight dollars a month, less than seven dollars a month, even. So that's to me, that's a really good price. It's really reasonable. You get a lot of good quality content out of that, including some um, Star Wars type stuff like the Mandalorian that's going to be available there. So super stoked, super excited, and we'll be on board the second it's available for sure. And so, so here's my question. Who should be most worried about this new service coming up? I'm curious what you think. Who should be the guy, the people that are like, oh, man, they're going to eat our lunch. Um, like, I don't think it's going to be Amazon because of their model of everybody buying Amazon Prime, not for the streaming service generally. Um, do you think Netflix is going to be the company that's going to be like, ooh, they should need to worry about this? The the only people that I think have anything to worry about here are Apple. Um, Apple, maybe, maybe Apple. Um, I think uh, actually that's a pretty good point. You know, Apple's looking at the looking like they're going to try to run family friendly and stuff like that. And this is that's the epitome of what Disney does. They're launching at the same time. They don't have nearly the uh, as much content. And uh, if I remember right, their price is going to be significantly more. Um, Yeah, we don't know what the price is going to be. No, but. The, the speculation, yeah. Right. Uh, so I think court- that's a, a really good call. I was going to say, um, you know, existing cable companies. You know, I mean, we talked last week about the decline of the decline of cable companies. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> well, I think this kind of thing hastens that, right? Like one of the – kids are a major reason that people don't leave cable. Um, you know, to me, there's kind of three reasons, Right. The, the technological complications for people that are really not tech savvy and don't want to deal with anything other than what they're used to. Um, sports, which we've largely gotten past the need for cable TV for sports, though there still are some advantages. And kids, right? Easy, easy to turn on and let the kids just watch the shows that they want. Um, something like this that is super kid oriented, that is a brand that everybody is super familiar with for their kids, that's going to help draw that group away from from cable subscriptions. So I think that will kind of kick the yeah. cord cutting back into gear a little bit. So existing cable companies and, as Clyde mentioned, totally Apple. Mm-hmm. This will be interesting to see if Apple can even get its feet under it before it gets destroyed. Yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the, our, the our friends at Cord Killers who said that really they think the company that needs to worry about this was uh, CBS All Access, yeah. and uh, that's an interesting uh, thought. Well, right no, there, I, but... I don't think they said it was uh, that they need to worry. It was more this is what they should have done. Uh, they couldn't have, but they couldn't have. They don't and, have this content, and, and that is also what I was thinking uh, when I heard heard everything that was being announced in this announcement, and I was like, "This is what Apple right. should have done," but right. they couldn't because Apple, 
<laughs> made a valid attempt. They've got they a lot tried. of stuff that they're trying to do. But uh, also, their announcement was really weird, so it yeah. felt weird when they no, announced it. No, I mean, but, with, all the blo- you know, with all of the noise they've been making over the years of this is coming, they, you know, they <laughs> they they have, like, four or five things that are like, oh, yeah, awesome. And Disney's like, no, here's, like, 20 things, and th- these are only the 20 things that we're willing to tell you about right now. And, yeah, and I, I think you're right. I agree with both of you. The, peer, the company that should worry the most about this is Apple, not for content, re, content because it's the same content. The same, they're looking for the same audience. They want to hit that family-friendly audience. Uh, and But Apple has to now, in order to survive or do it be effective, they need to come out earlier than, uh, uh, than, the, than what, September 12th? And they have oh, November 12th, excuse November. me. And they need to come out at a, a reasonable price that they can justify compared to six. I mean, to nine Apple's months. got a built in audience, so, right? Yeah. But, and, I suppose. And, it's, and for them, it's, 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 there's going to be people that it's a no brainer because they're already, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but indoctrinated. There it is. That's mm. the word. Um, but then you've got the people like me that are, not interested partly because you know it's an apple branded thing i'm not interested um whereas disney it is part of the mind you know it they already have everybody their brand uh you know hardware agnostic they're just the thing you know if i if my kids were five years younger this would be an auto and auto include but they're yep. at the point now where i I don't know who would con- who would use the content, um, so that's that's the only reason I'm on the fence. So, yep. uh, right. but it sounds like they're gonna be uh, bundling stuff, right? Yeah, the the last little bit for uh, the uh, the for this uh, Disney Plus news is that it looks like they are planning. There's rumors of them planning to make a bundle of Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu together. Or maybe a combination of those kind of uh, sub different combinations of those guys. They will get you what you want for a less overall monthly cost. So, um, which is to actually, if you know anything about Disney and the cable and or uh, satellite business and how they do their pricing, is exactly what they do. They bundle. They make it so yeah. you, when you don't bundle, it makes no sense in that business. And this one, I bet you they'll do something similar where if you don't bundle, if you want it and you're not bundling you're wasting your money. So it's going to make a lot of sense. Yeah. I'll get Hulu with no commercials for $4 more or whatever they end up doing. Yeah. And, and whatever the price of that bundle is, I, I might be in, I might be in on that. That might be my way into Disney plus because I'm, I'm a Hulu subscriber. Uh, that's not going to change anytime soon. Um, I could see my dad maybe using the ESPN and then, it's like, okay, well, if I get all three and it's only a little bit more than I'm already paying for Hulu, then maybe. But. All right. So, if you are really into your football, and you, and by football I mean soccer, and you really, really want to watch a big, very po- big, exciting game this weekend, uh, you can catch on Fox Sports 2 the U.S. broadcast of FIFA 19 Esports. Tournaments. Oh, e- esports. I, esports I, I, tournaments. I was super confused <laughs> that I'm looking at this picture, and you're you're talking it up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I, wait, this pic. I, I don't. Am the, I looking at the right story? The, that guy is he's like the, total <laughs> player guy. That guy's the Pele of esports. <laughs> I, I don't know. He might actually be. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's holding the he's holding the trophy, so he must be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, all right. This, sure. this is this is uh, you know we're we're seeing esports emerge. It's gonna be a real t- thing. Stop trying to deny it, people. Esports is sports. It's just I, not the kind of sports we yeah. you're used no, to. We, I no longer. This. No longer do you need show... to go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say so. no longer do you need to train. Uh, your entire <laughs> life to be the me- next Michael Jordan, everybody can just be Michael Jordan with their <laughs> controller. I feel like for esports tournaments like this, the the footage, the coverage should literally be 
a camera sitting basically where our cameras are, except catching the mouse and keyboard for them. And that's all it should be the whole time is just, yes, watching them. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Look at that thumb movement. Can you imagine? Those thumb muscles are really working hard. Yeah. No, no, no actual views of the screens. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, gonna call it a sport. You got to show the athletes, not the computer. That's 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 a video uh, game. Yeah, well, I, I would I might make an argument the other way, but not the not today. Not that I don't feel like it. So I'm just being a jerk, really. No, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. It takes skill. Um, it takes skill to be good at those games. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh I yes. Can't, I can't do it. Uh, at which I, ex- I. Uh, demonstrate on a almost daily basis in a couple games. So, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, rock on. Good for them. Uh, all right. So there's a new Logitech remote uh, Harmony remote that's out this uh, week. It's uh, they call it the Logitech Harmony Express. It seems really. Whoa! Oops, wrong. wrong I, feel, I feel. I feel really. <laughs> that was the wrong button. I was going. I ahead. didn't mean to press the, that button on the Harmony remote and turn <laughs> off the show. Sorry. I hate it when that happens. Uh, but no, it's uh, got Alexa power built into it. It's a simplified remote. doesn't have nearly as many as buttons as your usual Harmony remotes. It has a built-in IR blaster you sit next to or under your TV. And you are able to integrate it directly with your, Am- your Amazon Alexa for you to tell it to watch Netflix or to turn off the TV or turn the volume up. And it will be controllable, both right from the remote or use through your assistant device. I when I saw this article, I I was excited, new Harmony remote, and then I saw the picture and I went, yeah. "You? <laughs> I mean, I my my Roku remote is perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> that thing yeah, looks to be twice as wide, and yeah. has less buttons. I um, so, I I actually am am pretty fond of the of what appears to be like the form factor and style of this remote. I mean, it does, I, I don't think if it is as wide as you make it out to be. I mean, like if I, if I hold this oh, remote, I'm just like, saying what, like it appears, picture, uh, what it appears to be, it seems like maybe it's 25% wider. So yeah, it's a little wider, but um, I don't like the size of the buttons on the Roku remote. I feel like they're just small enough that you can easily miss them. Um, so I'm, I'm, I like the size and the shape and the lack of buttons. I, I appreciate right. the conciseness of the features. You, you can assume there's probably some sort of phone integration the, and uh, you've got Alexa integration as well, right? So if you want more complexity, you can talk to it and you can use your phone. Um, these, this slim down remote seems perfect. Um, pretty excited about this. However, after reading through the article, I probably won't pick one up. <laughs> well, it, the problem is, okay, so when I saw it and then I said, okay, well, then it's probably significantly cheaper than the other <laughs> Harmony <laughs> remotes. <think>. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, this is a $250, uh, which you could... If spend that money and get a traditional Harmony remote, which will control everything. Um, and well, too, just well, well I mean, but, to what you can say to but, it, essentially. but it yeah. would pass the the regular Harmony would pass most of the babysitter tests because That's it you pick it up, it's just a regular remote. They may not know how to switch devices, <laughs> yeah, except unless you've got the LED sc- or the LCD screen that says watch tv <laughs> watch roku yeah. watch dvd and you just push but um yeah i, well, I think- if it was significantly cheaper uh i mean but mainly because i have no use for the uh the echo assistant built in right. so 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 i i have to take umbrage with one of your statements so the babysitter test is probably no longer valid 
because the babysitter can probably figure the freak out of everything <laughs> way better than yeah. the my parents test. Ah, <laughs> now it's gotta be the grandma or the or the parents test because the babysitter probably gets it faster than you do, even though you set it up. Oh, um, oh sorry. Uh, we can change it to the neighbor test because everybody's got at least one neighbor that's just totally missed the uh, technology. There you go. Yeah. Revolution. Um, the the other thing is that, like, it, I think that this actually ends up being relatively easy because, like you said, you've got your watch TV, your watch, uh, watch a DVD type system. Well, now you just speak those commands, right? So you're, hey, assistant, watch TV. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get a lot of this out of my Fire TV, right? I can say, you know, watch this or do this and... It'll change the inputs on my TV for me. It'll turn the volume up or down. And so I, I get that. And my parents were here uh, not too long ago for a couple of weeks. Within a couple of days, they were using my Fire TV Cube relatively effortlessly. Um, and it, it worked out great. Now, yes, you go with that concept of like the babysitter test where it's like, they come over and they can immediately pick it up and not have to be coached through it or have a diagram. Yeah, probably not quite there, but pretty close. And, you know, I like it a lot. I really enjoyed the the voice activation in a lot of cases. You don't have to find the remote. You don't have to do anything. You just turn the you know volume up or walk away as, as you're walking away, tell it to turn off the TV and yeah. all the devices and stuff. If you're an Amazon user and you have echoes in your house, then, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I could see the appeal. Um, but I still won't go for the $250 price. Oh, tag, no. Because that's pretty No, crazy. no, that's what I was saying. Uh, and Bad Weave points <laughs> out that uh, it comes with an all-new app, which, of course, <laughs> doesn't work with any other Harmony remote. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And that's what well, I was saying. If this was, like, around the $100 mark, mm -hmm. I could see this as a no-brainer for, well, you know many people but yeah yeah i mean i'll go back to the my comment about my fire tv my fire tv offers integration with my speaker and my and my tv and most of my devices and because it has the echo built in i can turn off my smart lights i can see my front door camera and stuff all within my ecosystem and that thing didn't cost 250 bucks yet it's the streaming device too so I, I think the price on this is is a bit of a killer. So I linked a little bit earlier in the chat a link to the mono price um, um, IR blasting hub that they have by Stitch, their mm -hmm. Stitch brand. Um, I've not used it yet, but I've understand. I've used a couple of their little light switch plugs, and um, they work with a, with the uh, Amazon Assistant and the Google Assistant. They don't require a hub. This little thing is twenty three dollars. You can save yourself; t you can pay ten percent of the price and probably get all the voice uh, actions you could have gotten out of it for it. Now, knowing Harmony, you will be able to say, "I have this TV. This is uh, and, and it's plugged in here, and it will know how to do everything like that." Well, yeah, I mean, but, he said that it auto detected a lot of the devices for right. him when he configured it, so he didn't even have to do anything. It auto detected his Xbox on the network. And stuff like that. So that's pretty slick, but still, yeah, you're paying 250 bucks to save yourself 10 minutes of configuration. I, I, I will say this: it's this is a kismet that this uh, story came up today because today my replacement battery for my Harmony remote I bought in 2005 mm. um, came, came, so I real. can start using it again. And I mean, it, that, that's like a almost 20 year old harmony remote that yeah. still works with everything right um, there you know i mean they're a great investment uh mm -hmm. and yeah this thing this battery was puffy <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah but i mean it was still working you know i still have my later, harmony so. remote as well and it still works beautifully um i'm not using it right now but it Last time I tried it, it worked great, and um, yeah, they're, they're good products, and they do provide great coverage, like long-term support. They don't drop it off like 
every year. You don't have to buy the newest version because they came out with the new one. So, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with Logitech. I just think this one's a little overpriced. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's harmony not remotes. quite They're where it needs expensive. to be for that price. I mean, the basic Harmony remote's, what, 70 bucks? So You get a great one for 70 bucks. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hulu is uh, buying back all of AT&T's stake. Uh, from uh, uh, from the from the uh, their stake of uh, Hulu, so basically that means that uh, Comcast and Disney are going to be the only ones left of owning any piece of uh, Hulu now, which makes me wonder when Disney's going to make a sweet sweet offer to Comcast so they can have it all. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of the best way to say this. Um... I don't think that would be. I I don't think anybody believes that would be in the best interest for Hulu. Because uh, oh. I mean, Disney has mentioned that they are intent on using Hulu uh, for the stuff that doesn't quite fit into you know uh, into Disney Plus and. Current Hulu subscribers have that expectation that if we're going to lose the NBC stuff and everything else that goes along with it, mm. uh, that that becomes a hard sell. And that may be the day where I reevaluate if I'm a Hulu for life person. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, at t had already, they had made their intentions known a while back that they didn't really care about Hulu and they were probably going to get out. So uh, I, I, I thought it was interesting though, that, uh, that Hulu bought it back. So uh, yeah. it's not like now Disney has even right. super ultra mega majority or Comcast is, you know, creeping up. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. The, I, I, the, one of the things about this that I kind of look at is, what is the impact on Hulu? Is Hulu now more reliant and more valuable based on its Hulu TV offering or its traditional Hulu um, streaming package? Because that makes a big difference as to the impact of, of uh, something like this, right? Like losing additional channels to that um, Hulu streaming package hurts that service, right? But if the Hulu TV streaming package still has all of the features that it has with those contracts, then it isn't that big of an impact to those customers. So it really depends on where their where their future lies. And but the, not- the, but it does matter because when you're uh, getting you're subscribing for the Hulu TV, um, you are also getting the regular Hulu package. That's what okay. makes it. Uh, worth getting. Otherwise, you could go someplace else, like Philo or PlayStation well, View, or you know the the Hulu uh, Rip regular is what yeah. differentiates them. Uh, it makes them competitive and compelling because I mean Hulu Live did up up their prices recently, right. and so um, it's not like they're significantly cheaper. Um, no. I mean, but all of the services effectively offer the same feature set. You know, Hulu adds the Hulu Live, the Hulu streaming service. YouTube gives you um, YouTube Premium with with the YouTube TV. So those are kind of slightly differentiated. The, but YouTube TV is not competing at all on price. Um, they're, I, I believe, tied for the most expensive. Really, they're yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're about to have problems because um, they just shut down all of their uh, premium. The their their reason, their compelling reason to uh, sign up for YouTube TV uh, was to get the additional stuff like uh, the premium shows and whatnot, which they basically canceled all of them. Um, yeah. Except for Cobra right. Kai, and but that's not even going to be on YouTube Premium. That's going to be who knows uh, where that's going to end up. Uh, so they're in for. But the- you still get don't don't you still get the YouTube Premium service that's uh, commercial free YouTube? You do, you do. There's so that. I mean, 
that to me, I, I pay for that on its own. So, you know, when I look, when I was getting YouTube TV, that was saving me eight bucks a month or something like that. I don't know, maybe even 15. I have no idea what I pay for it. It's worth it. I don't care. Um, but you know, so I was saving a little bit of money. Um, once I realized that I was actually paying for both of them and I canceled the one because it didn't automatically combine the account, even though I subscribed from the same account. Thanks YouTube. That's a really crap move. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll do, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, cause it could be really good. It could be really bad. And I like Hulu the way it is, so please don't change. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, Game of Thrones, you know, it's a show. People like watching it. It's uh, the new seasons out. New channel. New uh, seasons just got started. And Wait, they, what? Uh, yeah, you can now watch the seasons the, the, out. The new the premiere for the eighth and final season is coming out, and yeah, uh, you can watch it on Sunday. Yeah, it was on Sunday, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, people like watching it. Apparently, lot, everybody wanted to watch it. E- even people who didn't have the opportunity to watch it legally, because apparently it was uh, pirated 55 million times in the first 24 hours of it being uh, available. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I guess yeah. that's HBO. So it's still saying, hey, look at how popular our show still is. Because the... that's what they were saying before. As we're happy, say... we're the most most pirated show on the internet. That's fine with us. The... The HBO CEO is now kicking himself for saying that one time many years ago that it was okay. That oh, that dude's gone. About it. Yeah. Well, is that why he's kicking for, himself? For a good reason. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that this is just clearly an indicator that this is a super popular show. People don't want to wait for it, they don't want to have to fight to see it. Um, I am happy to see that a large percentage of those people are from places where it is hard or impossible to get for, for in a, in a legal means. Um, But, you know, I mean, if you're in the U S pay the freaking 10 or 15 bucks a month for two months and watch the show. It's, it's Uh, so easier way. Uh, You just do like me and uh, use AT&T for your cellular service and you get your HBO for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Consult. there's lots of very reasonable priced solutions to get these shows or even wait two months, pay for HBO for one month and get the whole season and watch it. Um, I will sub- resubscribe to HBO probably tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I, I totally I knew this was coming up, but my new job, nobody talks about anything exciting and like. In my old job, I would have gotten to work on Monday and I would have had to put my headphones on right away when I realized, oh, crap, everybody's spoiling Game of Thrones. I missed the first show. And that night I would have gone home and watched it so that I didn't have to, like, have my headphones blaring all day on Tuesday while people talked about it. We can talk about some Thrones uh, in the post show. Um, mm-hmm. No, I don't, not, not spoilery stuff, but no spoilers. we can talk about it being back. Um, but you know, Matt, you mentioned that, uh, YouTube TVs, uh, uh, doesn't have Nickelodeon. Yeah. So they, uh, basically uh, YouTube TV introduced a lot of the Viacom channels into it with the time of the price hike. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically I, we are, we were getting YouTube TV and Philo, those two together basically had everything we wanted for a decent price altogether for those two. But since they pri- hiked the price up. We're like, great, as long as they get the channels we need. Oh, we aren't getting Nickelodeon and our son loves watching it. But you, you but, might have a new option. Uh, not this one probably won't cover me because it looks like Viacom is planning on using their their new purchase of Pluto TV to provide a whole bunch of content in form of about 15 new channels for the service. But it looks like they're taking various pieces of their content and throwing it in there. But they're there will, according to this article, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get mm. a Nickelodeon uh, uh, proper out of it. Just some of the older shows. I was gonna say because I know your kids say they want Nick, but really, it's BET that they're after. <laughs> no, I don't sure? think he's ever seen no. BET. Okay. No, well, what he wants is uh, to be able to, to watch. Uh, 
Loud House, and every single time, I mean, the real big one is every time it's uh, Nick's choice, uh, the Kids' Choice Awards, he wants to watch that live. So, say Loud House, I mean, that what sounds the, like a BET show. All Probably all of the Nick at Night stuff will come across. I mean, uh, all of those old shows, those are amazing. Double Dare, the old ones, not just Well, yeah. you got to remember, uh, Nick at Night was not Nickelodeon programming. Those were no, reruns like of other and, stuff, CBS and NBC. Yeah. And, um, they were all of the all of the Saturday classics. Night Live. That that's yeah. what that's how I got that's how I got started on Saturday Night Live was they'd show the seventies SNL on uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick at Night. At Night. Yes. And I would be watching that, totally not realizing that at the same time, a brand new episode of <laughs> SNL was airing. <laughs> you were probably you were watching a better one at that anything. time anyway. You were so. watching well, no, no, one. this, you got to remember, this was at the very beginning when uh, Adam Sandler had just got on there. So you had Dana Carvey and Phil Hartman oh. and Chris Farley. That was like the best SNL like, yeah. since... You know Chevy Chase and all them, but uh, I was say, yeah, it, the the stuff that was on Nick at Night was actually really good. But I will say, yeah, that was an era that you're talking about that was yeah. also really good. There's only been, in my opinion, two really good eras in, in on SNL: um, the early '80s um, and late '70s, and then that yeah, early, the 90s, early '90s. Early '90s. So it was like '90, 1990 to. 1995 in you yeah. know yeah because 90 95 was when everybody started leaving and then going got, doing like, movies and other right. people yeah. that weren't good so <laughs> if you guys like uh the roku channel and their their uh various uh new ability to pick up different I content do. You can use it now to pick up some new premium subscriptions, including Cinemax and various other shows like History Vault, Inside Out House Garden, Screen Box, which sounds interesting, Stingray, Quello Concerts. Uh, okay, I'll let that one go. So yeah, they're gonna, they're adding a lot more of those premium ch- uh, channels onto the uh, Roku channel directly. And remember, the Roku channel isn't just on Roku. Yeah, and cool. that's that's right because uh, that that's a good thing to point out because uh, branding is weird because you hear the Roku channel and you think oh it's a Roku thing well no it's mm-hmm. available on pretty much every platform you know they want it to be on every platform right and it's free so why aren't you using it there is no excuse you, you know- do not like free content. This is a rebranding opportunity for Roku. Roku should be should call it something else like Rocker by Roku or well, something like that. Well, the problem is they, and I think rightfully so, they knew that they needed to leverage. Roku has become a household it's a good name. Brand. It is a good brand. They need to do like some other people have done. They're trying to pivot away from hardware and become more of a media right. uh, service. So... The Roku uh, that I'm trying to, I don't know, whatever. I I, I lost <laughs> my eloquent speech that I had in my head. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, keeping the name is a good thing because it. Uh, it's something that people recognize, right? But if they but if they just modify it slightly with a something by Roku, okay. So if they they, kept the... they should take a uh, a thing from Netflix and then they'll just change all their devices to Quickster, <laughs> and then so <laughs> and then Roku and is then just now Ro- Roku is just now is just content and the I hardware Roku is, is and then the Quickster box. They yes. get the Quickster box. And then they immediately say, sorry, we didn't mean to. We're going to go ahead and just call everything Roku again. But we'll keep selling the hardware boxes forever and ever and ever as they now get everybody to think that Nef- Roku is a is a, is a, is a, is a platform yeah. for watching videos. No, I, 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 yeah, so ne- Netflix made that uh, oh, the, it. perfect example of why you just stick with the name that people know. It, it will be rough at first where – You've got one group of people that know the brand as one thing and one is another, but eventually people forget and it just whatever. So 
Uh, moving on, DirecTV has uh, been doing their... Uh, uh, their DirecTV Now has been working on uh, their various uh, lineup of channels, and it looks like the DirecTV Now is going to be officially dropping the NFL and NFL uh, NFL Network and NFL Red they Zone. They already have from the in DirecTV Now service. This does not affect anybody who is using DirecTV specifically. The normal but it does satellite. affect Uverse. It does. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. They could not reach an agreement with the NFL to carry their channel on Uverse TV. And DirecTV now. Mm. So, um, unfortunately, if uh, you were a f- you watch the NFL Network on DirecTV now, you might not have any reason to stick around. No, I think uh, your option is now officially, isn't it, Sling? Uh, potentially, or YouTube. I think. Oh, uh, it looks like Sling Blue and possibly things like PlayStation View. Yeah, could be other so. Yeah, you're and, and Fubo. Don't forget Fubo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't oh, yeah, forget, forget about Fubo. Fubo's got you covered. All right. And uh, I, did I miss anything? I think that's the end of our stories for the week. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> oh, it, it's not eight it, o'clock yet at my on my time. Uh, <laughs> it was eight o'clock like two hours ago for me, but uh. it, it's not even eight o'clock yet. <laughs> uh, but you know what? What it is. What? It is time to thank everybody that supports this show with their generace or their generace. I can't even generace. I generous. why am I even here tonight? I'm I'm just gonna mute myself. I'll let you guys do the rest of the show. Um, hey, we 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 love you, patrons. Patrons, with this deformed heart that I can't quite figure out and, how to do. It, whatever. And it was beating. It was beautiful. <laughs> I have to just I, I think that was a wonderful heart you did right there. And that heart Thank was you. for you guys that are patrons. You. you know that we we do all this show because we love doing the show, but also we do the show <laughs> because we love you guys as patrons. You sure. get to be our beating hearts and tell us how we the, you want to see this show evolve. You get to help support us because you know that we're trying as best we can to make the best content for you. And uh, please come and, visit and see us and give us uh, uh, your, your patronage at patreon.com slash the VOD squad. We and really if, sh- if we are not broadcasting up to your standards, even more reason to become a patron because the patrons, uh, we listen to their feedback. That's true. Good point. You know, um, we, we they, they speak much louder than everybody else. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you find some uh, benefit or you enjoy what we do, uh, even if you don't, uh, consider. Don't like consider. the shirt I wear. Just let me know. It'll be a different one next week, and we'll make sure <laughs> that he wears it. whatever it is. Also, Maybe it'll be a shirt. There is there I'll is a good you. chance that if you tell him that you don't like that shirt, there may there's a really good chance that next week we all may be wearing that shirt. Ah, um, yeah. that's a good point. But <laughs> careful yeah. what you ask for. So you just get all it. right. That uh, yeah, it, it 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 will end the spiel there. But that's uh, patreoncom slash the bod squad. Um, then you know what we should check. <laughs> Bad we runs off. Uh, to check his shirt orders. <laughs> uh, why don't we run off and check in with Big Boys Jay? Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of April 15, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay, brought to you by The Shovel, a real groundbreaking invention. Let's go to the scoreboard! Teams Ritual Misery and The Vod Squad are all tied for last place, still waiting for the first film. Team Drunkage Gaming is in fourth place with $14.3 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $92.5 million. Team Movie Party is in second place with $164.9 million. And in first place, with $539.4 million, it's Team Have a Drink. That's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute, all totals of record as of April 17th, 2019. I seriously thought Have a Drink uh, or would uh, be much further ahead at this point, but, uh, hmm. Um, Captain Marvel's done them wonders. No, Captain Marvel has carried them. Absolutely done them wonders. That... Uh, Hotel Mumbai has done nothing <laughs> for them. 
Uh, and, and, and Shazam uh, would have been fine. a great would have been a great Christmas movie. No, I know, um, you know it's doing fine. Don't worry, and it's got a long tail. It'll still make lots of money. Just maybe not in the two hundred million, but it will still make a. I bet you it hits one hundred and fifty eventually by the end of this draft because we have a, a long time. But this uh, Bad Weave does put us in our place and remind us that we got just wait until uh, game night starts raking in that sweet long shot cash. <laughs> um, yeah, we but, all have to work. I am so worried about long shot. Yeah. I mean, I, I am dreading when that movie comes out. I am so worried it might do more money than Hellboy. <laughs> and let's Who's... talk about that. Oh, wow. I mean, Hellboy, they really should have left it in October. Uh, I think it would have done much better. Uh, for the type of movie it is, it kind of doesn't make sense right now. Just like Shazam uh, doesn't, it's, you kind of have to divorce yourself from the movie because it, you know, when, when, when it's Halloween and you're in that kind of Halloween mood, that Hellboy movie, I think would have done much better. Um, I, I almost want to go see this just cause I feel bad for the movie. It's doing so miserably. <laughs> it's like, Oh boy. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, Yeah. It looks pretty decent. Like, I don't think the trailer looks bad or anything. And 14 million in the first weeks. Super, super bad. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not performing nearly as well as they were hoping. And it's, uh, I don't know what was wrong with uh, with how they promoted it or anything. I don't remember seeing very much promotion at all. For which one? The pro- for Hellboy. Oh yeah, there has been no promotion. That that's that's the problem. Mm-hmm. The, the the other problem is that everybody loves the other Hellboy. Yeah. And when they realize that this is a Hellboy, it's a reboot, there's a oh well uh, if it's good I'll go see it, but then they don't <laughs> hear anything about it because nobody went to go see it. Yeah. So yeops. That's yeah. not good. This uh I paid to see Hellboy. You um, did. Because Movie Pass was acting weird and it wouldn't let me check in and the movie was going to start in 10 minutes and I finally said screw it because mm. my friend already had her ticket. Oh. Um so I wasn't going to be like nope. <laughs> <laughs> um so Did yeah. you like the movie Clyde? Um we we could probably uh since we're on the topic, uh we get right into some rants and raves. As I refresh this. So, rants and raves. I saw Hellboy. Oh. <laughs> You're the reason why it didn't do very well. It, 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 when I went, they didn't even bother tearing my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like... They are- I'm sorry, the Whatever. guy was probably looking at it and go, did, did we even do that movie? Not Is that even- only did I, I see Hellboy, but I ended up paying $15 to see Hellboy because it ended up being on the really big screen. Oh, I think I could see your $15 on the, on, on the thing here. I was I could see not there. happy. I was, you know, I was grumpy uh, going into that movie. And I will say I sat down and I was furious uh that i just paid 15 dollars for a movie that i wasn't even interested in you know I, I i i enjoyed the ron perlman's hellboy stuff but i'm not a hellboy fan right the movie started and literally 20 seconds into the movie i was already laughing my butt off so so it is your fault yeah <laughs> you, like, we established beforehand <laughs> It is not a great movie. Ah. It may not even be a good movie, but it is fun. Oh, oh man, that movie is so much fun. And there Look were parts by. where I I'm I'm watching this and they're setting up like a flashback or a scenario and I'm like, "Wait. Isn't that Predator?" And it's like, it's like the 
scenarios from other movies. I mean, <laughs> yes, the details are changed. And <laughs> it's like, wait. Um, and I mean, it, and as Al- Alanon pointed out in, uh, in the movie party chat that, uh, basically the movie is Hellboy fights green screen. Um, oh. <laughs> and there, there was like a 20 minute segment that I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard because I realized he's the only actor. Everything <laughs> else is CG. And I'm imagining him in this big green room running around trying to do this fight stuff <laughs> with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and but these balls were... on the ends of sticks and say, this is a bad guy. Hit it, punch him. <laughs> and there was a few times that if I wasn't looking at the character, I could swear it was he was voiced by um ah oh crap, now I can't think of his name. Uh he he was uh he does all the deep voice stuff for like uh Family Guy and he's Joe and um Ah. He was on so Seinfeld. I, but is Abe Sap- Sapien in the movie? I can't say anything about okay. any characters that may or oh. may not be in the movie. Yes, Patrick Warburton. There were several times that I swear I heard Patrick Warburton. <laughs> Which, if you hadn't told me that, if you had told and uh, told me that that was Patrick Warburton, I would have believed it. Um, but I like Patrick Warburton. I, I like yeah. him in pretty much everything. So he's a pretty funny guy. Yes, um, but <laughs> uh, it was not. Uh, it wasn't, uh, Ron Perlman. Nope. But that's not a bad thing. No. Not necessarily a good thing either. It was, they both had things that were great, so. Ron Perlman brings Ron Perlman with his role. You don't get not Ron Perlman when you get a Ron Perlman role. The only thing that I would say, uh, that. Ron Perlman's version did better was the voice. Hmm. Cause when I think of Hellboy, I think of Ron Perlman's voice. Okay. Yeah. Um, it Hellboy's voice isn't as deep and gravelly. Um, hmm. but that's the only thing other than that. I wouldn't have known, you know? Very so. cool. Yeah, well, I'm glad uh, you liked uh, it. Go see it, especially if you have a movie pass or cinemia or something where it's not actually costing you anything. You got nothing to lose, and I stand I... nothing to gain from this because I don't own that movie. Yeah, um, uh, I gotta say, t- uh, go ahead and enjoy because uh, drunk kids gaming they need the money right now. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, they might get rolled over by uh, game night, um, and their sixty three dollar long shot. Uh, I mean, because, uh, but, you know, we're still waiting for, uh, the biggest movie opening of this summer coming up in just two weeks, your first movie. Yep. Ugly Dolls. Ugly Dolls is coming out. We're going to finally be on the board. This movie is going to do, it's going to do great. (laughs) 50 to 150 million for I, sure i'm i'm sure it'll it might actually do better than shazam <laughs> it might <laughs> because there have not been very many kids shows for the summer yet it will and definitely be beat hotel mumbai so it well will maybe my hotel mumbai will actually be in more than four theaters so we'll see uh no uh the question is whether or not ugly uh, ugly dolls if there if there is a big we need to get the kids into a, 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 a to watch a movie that you know because you know because we don't we're we are really tired of the, the our kids because we need to have them watch a movie because it's May the, the May the fourth weekend. Uh, it's it's gonna be a pretty decent hit that first weekend. That's I don't think it'll have a long tail. I don't think it'll be a a movie that will make a a, a ton of money. But I th- I'm hoping it it's a hundred million dollars for us over this this movie this movie uh this draft. So one can that'll only be hope. a good start. All right. So what do you guys got? Rants, raves. So I got a story. Hmm? Not just such a short story, but you know. Okay. Uh, my uh. My family 
um, they they uh, were have been trying. They've been struggling to pick on a uh, a mobile carrier for their mobile phones, and uh, they were for a while with one company. Then they've been recently for a while with Sprint, and they've decided they don't want to do that anymore. So they all said, "Hey, let's go and talk to AT and T." Okay, so they sat down. They had five of them together, and uh, Grandpa uh, is, uh, is a veteran, so he gets the military discount. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So these guys got a, a stellar de- deal. Unlimited everything, basically $20 a phone. Great deal for a family package. No problems. Really nice. Uh, as part of the sign-up, uh, my wife tells me, oh yeah, by the way, they're going to come by and install DirecTV on our house. I'm like, what? Yeah, they're, they, 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 they're going to put DirecTV on our house. It's going to cost us 20 bucks a month. I went, Really? Yeah, I've got this text message here. I, do I accept it or do I decline? It's like, what are we getting? What kind of channels? Is it Direct TV now or is it Real Direct TV? Because you said something about a dish. It says, all I know is they're coming out to install on this date, and I need to let them know whether or not they're coming or not. So, and so we said, okay, fine. Let's go down to this store and we'll we'll discuss what we're getting. And if we, it's another sweetheart deal. It's uh, you can go in and you can get any direct TV with uh, with a military discount, fifteen dollars off any any one of the packages. So they were going to give us the thirty five dollar a month base package for uh, direct TV with the dish for twenty bucks a month. But I asked, and does that come with a contract? I said yes, that comes with a two year. Oh contract. yeah, absolutely. But I said I don't want it. I'm sorry. And then they said, well, you want uh, DirecTV now? You still get the $15 off a month. And I said, okay. Oh, yeah, and you get HBO as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I now have DirecTV now, and we're trying it out for one month, or was well, until we cancel it. On top of my other things, this has also happened shortly after we learned of the price bump from you, from uh YouTube TV. So we're like, might as well try it. And so now that we're on a month to month plan, we can cancel whenever we want. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm not super excited about the interface. It works. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Not super excited about only having 20 hours of DVR, but it's okay. It's enough. Mm-hmm. And for the low, low price of $35 of getting all that and, and the uh, for HBO, it's a good deal. Yeah. I'm I, I, you. I, I, that, I'm not super excited about it, but it's it's not a bad thing. Yes, so. I mean that's uh, that's how I ended up with Directv now, um, because of the the discount, because being an AT and T customer, and I rarely ever use it, but it's nice to know that it's there. Right, and I I don't dislike the interface. It's simple. It is simple. It's a, it's it. dark. It's missing a lot of flair. It looks kind exactly, of plain. and that's what I like about it. I like oh. that it's not all flashy and you know, it, it, it's not Hulu flashy is too flashy. I agree, yes. but I actually I like a little bit more. You know, just even a little bit more information on the grid is nice versus just really black on uh, white on black, almost nothing but Once the title. Once you figure the out the controls, because like when you're playing something, if you uh, use the arrow keys, you can get more information. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's been mostly what I that was last weekend. We actually spent like half a day dealing with that. And other than that, I've been playing, uh, playing all kinds of fun things of playing with Linux and playing normal windows games on Linux using wine, which has been my fun getaway this weekend. It's been lots of fun. It's doing really well. Just what so it, you know. And wine, what does wine stand for? Wine is not, wine is an, not emulator. an emulator. Yes. That's what it stands for. Yeah. Those silly open source people like recursive acronyms. Don't ask about herd and herd. I, I won't. Those are recursively recursive acronyms. It, you know, just don't do it. <laughs> okay. I'm done. <laughs> Mike. I don't really have much to say. I have not had time to watch much. Uh, but apparently you have a boring job where nobody talks to you. <laughs> I didn't say my job was boring. Well, he they're said boring. The people I said are boring. The people don't talk about anything exciting. That sounds boring. Oh, so um, they just talk actually, about stuff that we like to talk about. 
I sit in my office most of the day, which I kind of love. I don't interact with people terribly lots. And oh, so it's not that the people are boring. It's he is boring. I'm realizing now that all of the fun, exciting conversations that I was having at my last company were started and fueled by other people. And I mostly just latched hung along on with nice. latched on to them. Um, apparently I'm very boring, but well, I like a lot of interesting things. Um, welcome to the club. I'm a boring person. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, it's been, it's been a, you know, new company, new job, lots of, uh, getting to know people and lots of time at work. So, um, getting to n- learn, trying to learn new things. So I've had very little time to watch TV. I watch lethal weapon, one episode of lethal weapon and one episode of big bang theory every day. And that's all I have time for. <laughs> and I enjoy them both, uh, getting through the seasons, getting caught up and, you know, they're both good. Good. Oh, all right. Watch, also watching the Marvel cinematic universe from beginning to end in preparation for, um, Making and me a lot of money, donating more money to the to the the uh, domination of Clyde. Yeah, so I Clyde. mean, and I've got my movie tickets for opening night, so I'll be contributing to you. Thank you. Um, so I'm, you know, very stoked, very excited for it. I have uh, preemptively determined that I'm boycotting this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping the rule of Clyde alive. <laughs> Therefore, ensuring <laughs> the billion my, dollar movie. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I think at this point, like we've already determined that this movie is like it's already had the most pre-sales of any movie. Yeah. So it's pretty much already like a five hundred million dollar movie or something Adam, like that on opening, <laughs> and it's not and you're like three weeks out. Yeah, um, it was so. It's yeah. actually like two weeks out. It's not this weekend, but the weekend after that. Oh no, no, so. no! I'm saying it was determined to be a five million do- or five hundred million dollar movie by the sales pre-sales that were like three weeks out. Unfortunately, yeah. it looks like I will not be able to see the movie that when it first comes out. It looks uh, as like long I as you see it while it's in while it's in theaters. Who cares? I will find a way to see it sometime. While as it's long in as theaters, it but- counts towards my. Uh, I, I doubt I will not be able to watch it until uh, November, so I think you're safe. Uh, but <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to have to suffer with the Thanos demands your silence bit of uh, of uh, life, of so you know, people don't spoil it. Which they're gonna be uh, people will do that for like a week or two, but then I'm out of that zone of people wanting to talk about it and not be respecting the fact you haven't seen it yet. So okay. I gotta I figure still out how to do seen that. the first one. So, well, but you probably know what happened at the end. I don't. I don't really. Why? Care. So you don't care? Well, okay. So the, if you did care, you probably would not would uh, be upset if somebody told you what oh, happened. Oh, I've the listened the- to all the spoilers. I've heard right. I've heard people talk about it enough that I'm just like, yeah, I'm right. glad I didn't see that. Yeah, so too much Captain America. I'm out. <laughs> Actually, was, okay, whatever. There'll be more in this one, so Exactly. That that that's the main <laughs> reason I'm like I'm definitely out. Um so All right. Well, on that note, uh we will. Uh, we should probably end this now before you, we spoil everybody for next week's show. Uh, <laughs> that being said, if you're watching this after the fact, we are here every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, join us live. This is where all the fun happens. Participate in the chat, submit titles, and all of you that are here, head on over to tbs.showbot.tv, vote for those amazing titles that are waiting. Uh, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, guys, thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and end this. I'm going to hit the button and then hit refresh. Laters. Post show. Bye. Diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. (laughs) 